my next uh, Corona diary is uh, a certain person that I know likes a good bottle of red. Hey, baby! <laughs> oh, bless your shin. Bless you, baby. Hey, baby. Baby, I'm Bob Roll too. I miss you too. I like your little house. Quite a big house, really. It's the biggest house you see me in, isn't it? It is, actually. It's dirty, though, man. Are you happy to see me? Yeah. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it, mate. <laughs> Go on out. No, no, I'm good. I'm well stocked up. What are we doing then, now? You're there, but am I on? No, you're not. I am now. Oh, there you are. There we are. Brother, you look good. Oh, thank you, Shim. And thank you for the vino. Salute. Cheers, mate. Yeah. In fact, I didn't actually buy that bottle. Tomo gave it to me. Oh, well, save Tomo. Cheers, dude. Well, no, I gave it to you, though. So it's me who gave it to you. I know, but you wouldn't have given it to me if Tomo didn't get it to you, would you? Well, no, it's just the fact that Tomo gave it to me saved me spending money. I'm doing this on That's a budget. I'm saying. I'm saying thank you, Tomo. He's the one who spent the dough. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of questions for you. How are you coping with quarantine, bro? Do you know what? I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. I'm, I'm actually quite, I'm, I'm fitter, I think, during the quarantine than I have been in a while because I'm always outside in the back garden just doing fucking skipping and weights and press-ups or whatever I can do. So I'm, I'm probably fitter now. Before I start, do me one favour, please, brother. No, I'm not doing it. I know what you're going to ask. I'm not doing it. Oh, please. No, nah, nah, not happening. Not all right. <laughs> just once. Oh. Take your tooth out. I'm not doing it, mate. How'd you lose your tooth? It was a scrap, man, in Derby. Bounced on a on a club. And then uh, we ended up at... I was out on the night out with my ex-girlfriend's friends, weird enough. And then I had a bit of a to-do with this dude. It, it was my old really close pal. He was a few years older than me. But, uh, yeah, and then he ended up nutting me. And then I punched him as soon as he nutted me. Um, oh, sorry, the, the tooth flew out with the nut, by the way. And it was already dead from a previous kick-in. This is really... This isn't the one, really, is it, on such a lovely day? And then, uh, yeah, I was the one who got nicked. I got arrested for it. Um, with no tooth? With no tooth, gutted. I was making the right deal of it in the cellar as well. I was going, my tooth, my tooth. Look, have you seen it? I'm an actor. I'm, a, I'm an actor. My, my, my tooth. Well, you look brilliant with or without it. Let me you tell are you. wonderful, Shimmy. Come again. Come again. <laughs> What's your proudest and most memorable moment? Obviously, the, the proudest moment in life is, is the kids being born, isn't it? That's always the one. That's, that's, I mean, if I didn't say that, I'd be, a, I'd be a bastard, wouldn't I? But it's true. It really is my proudest moment in life. Career-wise, I don't know, hearing that Canada gig, when I got the, when I got the ABC gig, that was a, a big deal for me. It was, it was huge and a big deal for you, you know, wasn't it? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that was probably my proudest career moment in that I'd achieved something that I never thought possible. I'm not telling you when I was when I lost my virginity. It was a very young age, anyway. It was stupid. <laughs> it wasn't a stupid affair. I mean, it felt mutually wonderful, I'm sure. But <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. It, it, yeah, uh, I've worked in factories, man. When I left school, I worked in a chocolate factory. That was the worst job I ever had in my life. They put me off chocolate for a good good while. I, I heard Shane as well talk about he was. When he was uh, he was working for a cement firm or something like that, but I worked for my uncle's um, uh, like a refurb firm. It was a construction firm anyway, and I, I, that was a, a job that I thoroughly enjoyed. And I got paid I got paid eight pound an hour at eighteen, which was banging back then. And I was just sweeping up and shoveling shit really all day. And I, but I just I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed going to the pub after work and having a pint with the lads. And you deserve your pint. This is England, isn't it? It's got to be. You know, that's the, that's the one. Though I've had some brilliant jobs on the way. I mean, being human, I thoroughly enjoyed. What's been your lowest moment? <laughs> what, in life? <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm going down there, yeah. I love your reply. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, move on, next one. Is it a, no, seriously. My, my lowest moment in life. Yeah. 
No, there's been, there's been loads of them. There's been loads. All, all from my own mental fucking head. But I've had some fucking shit times. I've had some great times. I've had some shit times. But I don't know what my lowest was. There's been a couple of really bad ones. Just tell me um, or tell us about the time when you hooked up to a heart machine. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, cool. All right, cool. Only if you tell me. Only if you tell me. Who's your favourite actor of all time? Okay. That's a, that's a good question. I reckon Johnny Harris. Is, is my favourite actor of all time. Like, when I watch him, I'm just, I don't know, like, mesmerised. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. I'm, yeah. Just, I, th there's not that many actors that do it for me, but he, in particular, just, I, I don't know, I, I, I think he's fucking brilliant. And he, he can show that sort of vulnerability and that menace, and oh, yeah, I don't know. And he's a, he's a really lovely bloke as well. There's a couple of brilliant actors out there that, that, I mean, are brilliant, but sometimes they're dicks. So I, I can't, I can't have them as my favourite actors. A lot of some of the best actors that I know have come from uh, dark backgrounds. Yeah, you know, what I mean? like they, they've they've gone through troubles. Yeah, man. I think we were lucky when we joined the game, and that people were employing directors were employing sort of non-actors, or they were employing actors that that were a little bit that had a bit of a dark dark background and we sort of jumped on that bandwagon I think especially with, with like Shane I, I think especially with This Is England I, I suppose a little bit of a dark background kind of helps with that vibe innit If there was a, a role in a film or a TV series that you could have played which one could it be if you could have chosen I mean there's Jack Nicholson in The Shining I wouldn't mind a go at that Or Chopper remember Chopper Yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I remember Chopper, Chopper. Eric Banner is Chopper was Incredible. Sorry, I just love the way you sat. It's my interview seating. This is how I was sitting. Really? Do you know what, right? When I was when I was when I was growing up in Derby, I always fucking I was I was a bit of a knob. I was a bit of a dickhead when I was in my early teens and late teens and like, I've always had this paranoia when I'm back in Derby sometimes and I'm out on a night out or in a pub. I think someone's gonna get me eventually from my past. They're gonna fucking come and get me. I'm, I'm surprised a lot of the time that they haven't carried the grudge or, or just people just fucking grow up and move on. So it's not necessarily everybody's all my friend, but a lot of the people that I initially thought might want to fucking shoot me, I see, an, uh, I see on a night out and I'm a quite fucking adult and I'm a there still. Yeah, but you've turned the camera around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what drives you to keep on pushing keep on kind of giving it your best performance every time and i spoke to an actor once and he was, he was an actor that was really fucking good and he'd, he'd, he'd gone to radar and i really rated him anyway and we did this scene together and i said and he says he saves his 100 percent for certain jobs and i've always been like, nah, nah i could never save my 100 percent for a certain job i have to give it 100 percent every job surely it's like them people who when they go dancing if you don't go dancing hard you're really if you hold back, you look like a swat. If I've if I've given it my all, my whole my whole energy, I've worked on it. If I've if I've really given a fuck, then I, I, I can go home at night and, and sleep. Whereas if I've gone in and I've 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 not worked on the script, or I've not worked a certain angle of that character, then I'll go home and I won't be able to sleep. As people were constantly evolving, or our personalities are changing, I believe that it's events and stuff that happen in our lives. Um, that changes as people. If you had to think of something that you feel changed you at some change, you are, what would that be? What would that event be? My children. And once I had my boy, my whole life changed. I decided that I was going to be a really good person. I was going to knock cigarettes and drink on the head and work out every day, and go to work solidly, save for the future, and get life insurance. <laughs> But it, it didn't quite do that to me, but it, it, it made me like, it made me realise how, how fucking unimportant I am as a, as a, as a singular person. And it also gave me this new love that I never thought I'd had before. I always thought love was 
Nicola Wiley, year seven. Nah, not a fucking chance, mate. Having a kid, that that's fucking, yeah, just unexplainable. Fucking uh, fear-inducing, anxiety-inducing love. Do you know what I mean? And also joy, joy-inducing, happiness-inducing, love. Well, then there's been so many people I've met along the way, including yourself, Shim. Like, you're always quite upbeat and positive. So that changed because, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm positive and upbeat, but also I'm very aware of this shit in life and the darkness in life. And I'm constantly battling with my own personality. I'm always thinking, maybe that person said the right thing there. Maybe I should go and live like that. You see, that's the thing as well with this fucking bullshit. I've got, I've got lots of friends, Shim. I've got lots of friends from di- different walks of life and different backgrounds and people who believe different things. And... Especially during this corona disease, I'm hearing all sorts of different fucking shit over WhatsApp, you know what I mean? And one of your closest mates can send you a fucking link about 5G fucking towers giving you cancer. And then <laughs> that could change your life forever. Next thing you I'm going fucking back up to Birmingham with the 5G fucking tower ruiners, you know what I mean? There's lots of moments and lots of people throughout my whole life that, that, that have changed me. But then I'm always ultimately sat back in my living room and thinking, Right, what's the right thing? Nah. And I'm always uncertain. What do you miss most since Corona and the lockdown has kicked in? Like I said, you're giving you a cuddle, man. I miss, I miss, I'm a cuddler. Me and, me and my closest are cuddlers. And I miss, I miss doing that. I miss meeting up with my me mates, man. But I get it. It's, it's, it is what it is. And that's why you're in your fucking hey up. Hey up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're doing this. But it's got to be took seriously, man, and I, I, I completely get it. What's the first thing that you'll do uh, as soon as quarantine's lifted? I'm going to go pub. I suppose value stuff a little bit more. Value value the things that I couldn't fucking access before. Like queuing up for supermarkets, that's a pain in the arse. I get it. I, 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 well, I 100% understand it. But I'm looking forward to that being squashed. I like a supermarket visit as well. I quite enjoy a supermarket. It's my time to sort of lose myself in the madness of consumerism. We've got to do something, man. You keep saying you're going to take me on this road trip, man. Can we do that as a celebration when Corona's done, when it's all over? Can we just, can we, can we, we do the thing that we always said we would do? Yeah? Definitely. I love um, you. Thank you for coming to see me and all, man. Yeah, I love you too. I'm not finished yet. I've got three more. I want, yeah, call him. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, though, I think there's a lot of people in, that I've I, that I knew I should thank, and I have thanked. Um, Fiona Groom, Peter Waters, Guy Leavesley, Mr. Holmes, Mrs. Urquhart Hughes, Ian Smith. Um, they, they, all these people I want to thank because they really did help me. I mean, mom, especially my mom. But yeah, I think most of the people that I've thanked, uh, most of the people that deserve a thank you, I've thanked. I've made it my fucking life's work, in fact. Piece of advice that I would give... I just don't take shit seriously, man. Just fucking enjoy, enjoy this mentalness. Enjoy this one gift you've got of, of life and fucking have fun. Take shit seriously when shit needs to be taken seriously, but otherwise just fuck it off. Have fun. Stop fucking pretending. Just fucking go out and enjoy your, your one time at it. You know what I mean? I think that's probably my best answer I've ever given, ever. I love you, Shim. This is fucking mad, man. I this know. is mental. <laughs> let's let's do some physical theatre and pretend we're hugging. <laughs> Honestly, bro, thank you so much for that. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Nice one, my man. I'll speak to you soon. Anyway, I'll speak to you now. I'll speak to you there.